store. She approached the owner of the store in a most humble manner and asked if he would let her charge a few groceries. She softly explained that her husband was very ill and unable to work. They had seven children and they needed food. John Longhouse, the grocer, scoffed at her and requested that she leave his store. Visualizing the family needs, she said, Please, sir, I will bring you the money just as soon as I can. John told her he could not give her credit as she did not have a charge account at his store. Standing beside the counter was a customer who overheard the conversation between the two. The customer walked forward and told the grocer that he would stand good for whatever she needed for her family. The grocer said in a very reluctant voice, Do you have a grocery list? Louise replied, Yes, sir. Okay, he said. Put your grocery list on the scales, and whatever your grocery list weighs, I will give you that amount in groceries. Louise hesitated a moment with a bowed head. Then she reached into her purse and took out a piece of paper and scribbled something on it. She then laid the piece of paper on the scale carefully with her head still bowed. The eyes of the grocer and the customer showed amazement when the scale went down and stayed down. The grocer staring at the scales, turned slowly to the customer and said begrudgingly, I can't believe it. The customer smiled and the grocer started putting the groceries on the other side of the scale. The scale did not balance, so he continued to put more and more groceries on them until the scales would hold no more. The grocer stood there in utter dis disgust. Finally, he grabbed the piece of paper from the scales and looked at it with greater amazement. It was not a grocery list. It was instead a prayer which said, Dear Lord, you know my needs and I'm leaving this in your hands. The grocer Having the grocer gave her the groceries that he had gathered and stood in stunned silence. Louise thanked him and left the store. The customer handed a $50 bill to the grocer and said, it was worth every penny. It was some time later that the grocer discovered the scales were broken. Therefore, only God knows how much a prior weighs. Now, when we look at this story, we, we can relate to it. We, we look at the situation that we are presently in, and we tend to ask God, where are you? But here it is. We can see, after taking a piece of paper from her purse and placing it in the scale, the topic, it comes home clearly, stand still. And if we look in Exodus 14 and verse 13, Exodus 14 and verse 13, when Moses would have said to the, the, the children of Israel, after they, they left Egypt and they were there quarreling, Moses, you took us from our comfort zone and you're taking us here to, 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 for us to die. And he reminded them, don't be afraid. Don't run away. Stand where you are and watch the Lord save you today. Now, as we go through, we would have been depending, and I hope we have been depending on the Lord for us to take us through. And he's just saying to us, this is a season that he's placing us through. 
Are we Hi, able students. at this I'm Amy point Prosser, in time and today I'm going to tell you to all about your new Google that account. The Lord is just to get started, you should sign in at, at gmail.com. Just go to gmail.com. To that there is It'll a God. take you to a page for that looks like this. Go sign in. Just reminding us and if that there's another account that pops up, you're just going to go to add account and still. you'll be able to sign in. So sign in with whatever the email is your teacher gave you. Your child, stand there. Don't move. My name. How long will that and child be able to stand have your there? Last name and some but numbers, yet, our heavenly as well Father as your is saying to us, stand still. Stand still, parents. Stand still, members of staff. Stand still, whoever you are listening to this recording. Stand still, knowing that indeed God is in control. And I leave this song with you. I know a man who can. I can take a heart that's broken, make it over again. But I know a man who can. I can take a soul that's in sick, make it white as the snow but i know a man who can some call him savior the redeemer of all men hi students I'm Amy Prosser, and today I'm going to tell you all about your new Google account. To get started, you should sign in at gmail.com. Just go to gmail.com. It'll take you to a page that looks like this. Go to sign in. And if there's another account that pops up, you're just going to go to add account. And you'll be able to sign in. So sign in with whatever the email is your teacher gave you. Mine has my name, can't walk and yours probably will have your first and last name and some numbers, as well as your charter. And it'll end in dot .school, which is a little but weird, it's not dot .com or dot .org. Just know that it's dot .school for can. Google. Go to next, it'll ask you for your password. And if you're on a personal computer, stay signed in is fine, but if you're on a shared computer, you should not use the stay signed in option. So type in your password and then go ahead and click sign in. If this is your first time going into your account, you'll get a page that looks like this. It's going to ask you to accept the policies of Google. And their policies summed up are be nice to other people online, don't be rude, don't be mean, don't be hurtful. And also, you should know that your school has access to pretty much everything that you do with the account. So use it for school purposes and you know, use it professionally. Once you click accept, you'll get to your inbox. Here's where it starts getting fun. First off, your Gmail inbox is not going to look very exciting right now. The first thing I like to do is go and change my theme. So I'm going to go over here to the little gear to get to settings and then go to themes. Choose a theme you'd like. I'm going to go with kind of like bugs. I'll go with this bug thing. I'll close that. And suddenly my inbox got left here. Look at that caterpillar. Anyway, um, the next thing you're going to want to do is change your password. Because right now you have the default password, and everyone has the default password. You change your password, go up to, instead of the image of yourself up here, you're probably going to have a letter or two letters for your name. And so Father, Click there, thank you and go to My Account. Morning. It'll we open up a page with lots of options. To recognize that you want to go to Sign In and Security. And as we go through Click this there. Another and you'll see, year, if you scroll down, there's a section that says signing into Google, that for and it'll say and password, us, last change, and, and this is where us. if you click here, we you can go in that and change there, your password. It'll ask you to verify your current father, password, that you're and the then one choose your new password. And so we Once you're done with that, you can go back to Gmail. I'm just going to go back to my Gmail, and let's look at some of the cool tools you have. I mean, so obviously you have email. You can send email messages by parents, going to Compose you have placed a and writing emails to your teachers. Or, you know, into their care uh, and if you have a job, you can use this as a professional email for your job. Care. 
And one Aside of from these that, though, there's a bunch of cool tools, and they're all hidden all up the here. Children that would have come if you go to this, it's like a waffle. And how would go to the waffle, and if you go to lives. Google Drive here, it'll Father, open up Drive, be which gets you to a ton of cool tools. In Jesus name we pray. Now, your drive's going to be empty. Mine has got a bunch of stuff. What you can do in Drive is really neat. You can go to New over here. There's Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and under More, there's even more stuff. Let's start by going to New and creating a Google Doc so you can see what that looks like. Basically, it's like a Word document. You can use it for essays, you can use it for reports, you can use it if you just want to type a list of stuff, that's fine. Um, you don't have to use your drive for only school documents. Um, and actually, what's great about Google is it allows you to share documents. So I can actually go, let's say this is an essay I'm working on, and just title it up there and go to share. And I can just type in the email address of somebody and say, hey, I want them to be able to edit or just comment or, oh, maybe I just want them to view it. Well, let's say it's my teacher. I want my teacher to comment. So I just type in my teacher's email. I type this essay up and bam, I've got my teacher able to give me instant feedback with little comments on my essay. Now let's get rid of our essay for now. Let's take a look at another tool. There's Google Sheets. Google Sheets creates spreadsheets, which can be really great if you need to uh, organize data. You know, you've got lots of little cells to put your data in. You can make charts and graphs. Um, but yeah, it's great for numbers. If you're working with lots of numbers, fabulous tool. Um, other tools you've got Google Slides. Google Slides is like PowerPoint, so you can create a presentation and you can actually, you, you've got all sorts of different themes, you can make new slides, and it's just like PowerPoint, except it's in your browser. And what's cool is, imagine you're working on a presentation with other students. You can just go to share and give them editing access, and suddenly you can all work on your presentation together at the same time and actually see what others are doing on the presentation. Other tools. There's also some more options down here. There's Google Forms. If you have ever wanted to create your own survey, Google Forms allows you to create surveys and quizzes. Google Drawings allows you to make, you know, drawings, but really it's more like you can manipulate shapes and objects to make some kind of cool projects. So if you needed to make like a digital poster or something, you can use Google Drawing to do that. You've got all sorts of color options. You can add text, um, you, know, you know, like have text boxes. You can add pictures. It's pretty cool. And Hi students, I'm Amy Prosser, and today I'm going to tell you all about your new Google account. To get started, you should sign in at gmail.com. Just go to gmail.com. It'll take you to a page that looks like this. Go to sign in. And if there's another account that pops up, you're just going to go to add account. 
and you'll be able to sign in. So sign in with whatever the email is your teacher gave you. Mine has my name and yours probably will have your first and last name and some numbers as well as your charter. And it'll end in .school, which is a little weird. It's not .com or .org. Just know that it's .school for Google. Go to Next. It'll ask you for your password. If you're on a personal computer, Stay Signed In is fine. But if you're on a shared computer, you should not use the Stay Signed In option. So type in your password and then go ahead and click Sign In. If this is your first time going into your account, you'll get a page that looks like this. It's going to ask you to accept the policies of Google. And their policies summed up are be nice to other people online, don't be rude, don't be mean, don't be hurtful. And also, you should know that your school has access to pretty much everything that you do with the account. So use it for school purposes and, you know, use it professionally. Once you click accept, you'll get to your inbox. Here's where it starts getting fun. First off, your Gmail inbox is not going to look very exciting right now. The first thing I like to do is go and change my theme. So I'm going to go over here to the little gear to get to settings and then go to themes. Choose a theme you'd like. I'm going to go with, hmm, I kind of like bugs. I'll go with this bug thing. I'll close that and suddenly my inbox got a lot cooler. Look at that caterpillar. Anyway, um, the next thing you're going to want to do is change your password because right now you have the default password and everyone has the default password. To change your password, go up to, instead of the image of yourself up here, you're probably going to have a letter or two letters for your name. Click there and go to my account. It'll open up a page with lots of options. You want to go to sign in and security. Click there. And you'll see if you scroll down, there's a section that says signing into Google and it'll say password last changed. And this is where if you click here, you can go in and change your password. It'll ask you to verify your current password and then choose your new password. Once you're done with that, you can go back to Gmail. So I'm just going to go back to my Gmail and let's look at some of the cool tools you have. I mean, obviously you have email. You can send email messages by going to compose and writing emails to your teachers or, you know, uh, if you have a job, you could use this as a professional email for your job. Aside from that, though, there's a bunch of cool tools and they're all hidden up here. If you go to this, it's like a waffle. Go to the waffle and if you go to Google Drive here, it'll open up Drive, which gets you to a ton of cool tools. Now, your drive's going to be empty. Mine has got a bunch of stuff. What you can do in Drive is really neat. You can go to New over here. There's Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and under More, there's even more stuff. Let's start by going to New and creating a Google Doc so you can see what that looks like. Basically, it's like a Word document. You can use it for essays. You can use it for reports. You can use it if you just want to type a list of stuff. That's fine. Um, you don't have to use your drive for only school documents. Um, and actually, what's great about Google is it allows you to share documents. So I can actually go, let's say this is an essay I'm working on, and just title it up there and go to share. And I can just type in the email address of somebody and say, hey, I want them to be able to edit or just comment or, oh, maybe I just want them to view it. Well, let's say it's my teacher. I want my teacher to comment. So I just type in my teacher's email. I type this essay up and bam, I've got my teacher able to give me instant feedback with little comments on my essay. Now let's get rid of our essay for now. Let's take a look at another tool. There's Google Sheets. Google Sheets creates spreadsheets, which can be really great if you need to uh, organize data. You know, you've got lots of little cells to put your data in. You can make charts and graphs. Um, but yeah, it's great for numbers. If you're working with lots of numbers, fabulous tool. Um, other tools you've got Google Slides. Google Slides is like PowerPoint. So you can create a presentation and you can actually, you, you've got all sorts of different themes. You can make new slides and it's just like PowerPoint, except it's in your browser. And what's cool is, imagine you're working on a presentation with other students. You can just go to share and give them editing access, and suddenly you can all work on your presentation together at the same time and actually see what others are doing on the presentation. 
other tools. There's also some more options down here. There's Google Forms. If you have ever wanted to create your own survey, Google Forms allows you to create surveys and quizzes. Google Drawings allows you to make, you know, drawings, but really it's more like you can manipulate shapes and objects to make some kind of cool projects. So if you needed to make like a digital poster or something, you can use Google Drawing to do that. You've got all sorts of color options. You can add text, um, you, know, you know, like have text boxes. You can add pictures. It's pretty cool. And just think of it as, yeah, like a digital. Other things, you've got Google Sites. If you've ever wanted to create your own website, Google Sites allows you to do that for free, which is pretty cool. And also Google My Maps allows you to customize maps and actually save locations on a map. But wait, there's more. If you go to New, under More, you can actually connect more apps. And there's all sorts of really cool apps. If you go here to All, you can actually search. Um, let me look at Entertainment. Uh, if you like editing videos, there's Wii Video. If you like editing photos, Pixlr Editor and PicMonkey are both great. There's also lots of other options, a music player, converters for audio files and photo editors. Um, if you go to games, I'll see what's under games. There's some different games in here. There's also uh, education. Everybody's favorite thing, right? Uh, Lucid Chart allows you to create um, mind maps. So you can actually like diagram things. It's pretty cool. And that's free. Um, if you just scroll down, there's tons and tons of stuff. There's a typing speed test. You know, there's a little of everything. And what's nice is when you roll over it, you'll see the rating. Because, you know, as you know, on the App Store, of any App Store, some apps are going to be better than others. So take a look at what the reviews look like before you get started with something. Um, anyway, feel free to add some apps. Now, you can also access the apps from the Waffle. So Google Drive's here, and you can get to the apps that way. But also, if you look, there's Docs, Sheets, Slides here. There's calendar. There's a calendar. You can have a personal calendar in here, and you can share calendars with people if you want. Sites is here. If I go to more, there's YouTube. Yes, your Google account links to YouTube. But remember, once again, this is your school account. Just keep it professional. Now, aside from all of that, the last thing I want to talk about is Google Chrome, and that is the browser I'm using right now. You can use Google Chrome um, with your Google account to actually have it automatically save bookmarks for you and put extensions on for you. Um, it's pretty amazing. So if you go on like a Chromebook, you sign into a Chromebook with your Google account, and what will happen is it will automatically bring up all the bookmarks you've saved to Google Chrome um, with that account and also the extensions. Some of my favorite extensions are, I love this APB, it's Adblock Plus. It blocks all the ads on sites. Doesn't work perfectly, but it's pretty awesome to get rid of most of the ads. Um, there's one tab, which if you like having a bunch of tabs open, it like smushes them all together into one tab. There's some other ones too. And if you, if you want, you can actually go here to more tools and go to extensions. And this will bring up the Chrome extensions I have. Now, you can also go down here to get more extensions. And there's a whole web store of free extensions. Lots of cool stuff. So you can check out lots of different tools people have created, and they're all rated, which is nice. Um, you know, and pick some out. Try them out. You can always remove them. There's themes, too, if you want your Google Chrome to have a theme. Like mine, when I open a new tab, has a dog, because I like Doge. So I have this little Doge dog here. But you can pick what you want to have your theme for Chrome. And... The key here is you really only want to sign into Google Chrome if you are on your own computer or if you're signing into a Chromebook. It'll automatically sign you into Google Chrome. So otherwise, if you're on a shared computer, you don't usually want to go and sign into Google Chrome because it's not as easy to sign out. Um, but no matter what you're you know doing on a public computer, make sure you sign out of your Gmail account when you're done. Um, when you're, you know done with all your Google tools that you're using, make sure you always go and sign out because you never want someone else using your account because who knows what they're going to do. They can make you look really bad. So with all that, thank you for watching. I hope this gets you excited about your new Google accounts. 
have fun, keep it professional, and stay smart. Hi students, I'm Amy Prosser, and today I'm going to tell you all about your new Google account. To get started, you should sign in at gmail.com. Just go to gmail.com. It'll take you to a page that looks like this. Go to sign in. And if there's another account that pops up, you're just going to go to add account. And you'll be able to sign in. So sign in with whatever the email is your teacher gave you. Mine has my name, and yours probably will have your first and last name and some numbers, as well as your charter. And it'll end in .school, which is a little weird. It's not .com or .org. Just know that it's .school for Google. Go to Next. It'll ask you for your password. If you're on a personal computer, stay signed in is fine, but if you're on a shared computer, you should not use the stay signed in option. So type in your password and then go ahead and click sign in. If this is your first time going into your account, you'll get a page that looks like this. It's going to ask you to accept the policies of Google and their policies summed up are be nice to other people online. Don't be rude. Don't be mean. Don't be hurtful. And also you should know that your school has access to pretty much everything that you do with the account. So use it for school purposes and, you know, use it professionally. Once you click accept, you'll get to your inbox. Here's where it starts getting fun. First off, your Gmail inbox is not going to look very exciting right now. The first thing I like to do is go and change my theme. So I'm going to go over here to the little gear to get to settings and then go to themes. Choose a theme you'd like. I'm going to go with, hmm, I kind of like bugs, so I'll go with this bug thing. I'll close that, and suddenly my inbox got a lot cooler. Look at that caterpillar. Anyway, um, the next thing you're going to want to do is change your password, because right now you have the default password, and everyone has the default password. To change your password, go up to, instead of the image of yourself up here, you're probably going to have a letter or two letters for your name. Click there, and go to My Account. It'll open up a page with lots of options. You want to go to sign in and security. Click there. And you'll see if you scroll down, there's a section that says signing into Google and it'll say password last changed. And this is where if you click here, you can go in and change your password. It'll ask you to verify your current password and then choose your new password. Once you're done with that, you can go back to Gmail. So I'm just going to go back to my Gmail. And let's look at some of the cool tools you have. I mean, obviously you have email. You can send email messages by going to compose and writing emails to your teachers. Or, you know, uh, if you have a job, you could use this as a professional email for your job. Aside from that, though, there's a bunch of cool tools and they're all hidden up here. If you go to this, it's like a waffle. Go to the waffle. And if you go to Google Drive here, it'll open up Drive, which gets you to a ton of cool tools. Now, your drive's going to be empty. Mine has got a bunch of stuff. What you can do in Drive is really neat. You can go to New over here. There's Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and under so More, get this. there's even more Every stuff. Every 1.07 seconds, a new, new user goes to Wix.com and starts so creating their professional like. website. That's 80,000 like go-getters joining every day. Essays, They're already growing their businesses online. You can use it if you just want to type a list of stuff. That's fine. Um, you don't have to use your drive for only school documents. So what um, about you? And actually, what's great don't. about Google is it allows you to share documents. 
So I can actually go, let's say this is an essay I'm working on, and just title it up there and go to share. And I can just type in the email address of somebody and say, hey, I want them to be able to edit or just comment or, oh, maybe I just want them to view it. Well, let's say it's my teacher. I want my teacher to comment. If so you're watching this I type in my right teacher's now, email. My I type powers this essay up and me bam. That there's about a I've got my teacher able to give me instant feedback with internet. little comments <laughs> on my essay. Now, let's get so rid sorry. of our essay for now. Let's take Thanks a look at another tool. To YouTube today there's Google and Sheets. Checking out Wellcast. Google We're Sheets creates spreadsheets, here. which and can be really great if you need to online, uh, organize data. To talk to you today. And you've got lots of little cells to put your data in. You can make charts and graphs. Um, but yeah, it's great for numbers. If you're working with lots of numbers, fabulous tool. Um, other tools you've got Google Slides. Google Slides is like PowerPoint, so you can create a presentation and you can actually, you, you've got all sorts of different themes, you can make new slides, and it's just like PowerPoint, except it's in your browser. And what's cool is, imagine you're working on a presentation with other students. You can just go to share and give them editing access, and suddenly you can all work on your presentation together at the same time and actually see what others are doing on the presentation. Other tools. There's also some more options down here. There's Google Forms. If you have ever wanted to create your own survey, Google Forms allows you to create surveys and quizzes. Google Drawings allows you to make, you know, drawings, but really it's more like you can manipulate shapes and objects to make some kind of cool projects. So if you needed to make like a digital poster or something, you can use Google Drawing to do that. You've got all sorts of color options. You can add text, um, you, know, you know, like have text boxes. You can add pictures. It's pretty cool. And just think of it as, yeah, like a digital poster. Other things, you've got Google Sites. If you've ever wanted to create your own website, Google Sites allows you to do that for free, which is pretty cool. And also, Google My Maps allows you to customize maps and actually save locations on a map. But wait, there's more. If you go to New, under More, you can actually connect more apps. And there's all sorts of really cool apps. If you go here to All, you can actually search. Um, let me look at Entertainment. Uh, if you like editing videos, there's Wii Video. If you like editing photos, Pixlr Editor and PicMonkey are both great. There's also lots of other options, a music player, converters for audio files and photo editors. Um, if you go to games, I'll see what's under games. There's some different games in here. There's also uh, education, everybody's favorite thing, right? Uh, Lucid Chart allows you to create um, mind maps so you can actually like diagram things it's pretty cool and that's free um if you just scroll down there's tons and tons of stuff there's a typing speed test you know there's a little of everything and what's nice is when you roll over it you'll see the rating because you know as you know on the app store of any app store some apps are going to be better than others so take a look at what the reviews look like before you get started with something um anyway feel free to add some apps now you can also access the apps from the Waffle. So Google Drive's here, and you can get to the apps that way. But also, if you look, there's Docs, Sheets, Slides here. There's Calendar. There's a calendar. You can have a personal calendar in here, and you can share calendars with people if you want. Sites is here. If I go to More, there's YouTube. Yes, your Google account links to YouTube. But remember, once again, this is your school account. Just keep it professional. Now. Aside from all of that, the last thing I want to talk about is Google Chrome, and that is the browser I'm using right now. You can use Google Chrome um, with your Google account to actually have it automatically save bookmarks for you and put extensions on for you. Um, it's pretty amazing. So if you go on like a Chromebook, you sign into a Chromebook with your Google account, and what will happen is it will automatically bring up all the bookmarks you've saved to Google Chrome. Um, with that account and also the extensions. Some of my favorite extensions are, I love this APB, it's Adblock Plus. It blocks all the ads on sites. It doesn't work perfectly, but it's pretty awesome to get rid of most of the ads. 
Um, there's one tab. Which you can also go down here to get more extensions. And there's a whole web store of free extensions. Lots of cool stuff. So you can check out lots of different tools people have created. And they're all rated, which is nice. Um, you know, and pick some out. Try them out. You can always remove them. There's themes, too. If you want your Google Chrome to have a theme, like mine, when I open a new tab, has a dog, because I like Doge. So I have this little Doge dog here. But you can pick what you want to have your theme for Chrome. And the key here is you really only want to sign into Google Chrome if you are on your own computer or if you're signing into a Chromebook. It'll automatically sign you into Google Chrome. So otherwise, if you're on a shared computer, you don't usually want to go and sign into Google Chrome because it's not as easy to sign out. Um, but no matter what you're you know, doing on a public computer, make sure you sign out of your Gmail account when you're done. Um, when you're you know, done with all your Google tools that you're using, make sure you always go and sign out because you never want someone else using your account because who knows what they're going to do. They can make you look really bad. So, with all of that, thank you for watching. I hope this gets you excited about your new Google accounts. Have fun, keep it professional, and stay smart. If you're watching this right now, my powers of deduction tell me that there's about a 100% chance that you use the internet. <laughs> I'm so smart. Thanks for logging onto YouTube today and checking out Wellcast. We're super glad you're here. And since you've already conveniently placed yourself online, we're going to talk to you today about internet safety. Now, wait a minute. Okay, before you roll your eyes and say, my mom told me all about internet safety already, or my surf instructor explained to me the dangers of leaving information on the internet. Just hear me out, all right? We spend a lot of time on the internet here at Wellcast, and we give pretty awesome advice. I think you'll agree. So today, we're going to give you our top four things that you absolutely need to know about internet safety. Are you ready? Tip one, the internet is forever, ever, ever, ever. That was all in-house. No joke, anything that you put on the internet, no matter how old, could be there until you have grandchildren of your own who will be Googling you. I mean, if Google is even still a thing in 40 years, I mean, who knows, maybe Bing can make a great comeback. So what do you do? Well, start by Googling your name, your phone number, your address, just to find out what's really floating around out there. Plus, it's kind of fun. If you're on social media, and who isn't, use the strictest privacy settings out there. Tip two, don't put personal information online. 73% of teens and 68% of young adults are on social networking sites. Of those people, roughly half post personal information, phone numbers, addresses, emails. Don't do that. If you do, it leaves you open for attacks from either cyberbullies or just some weird folks who want to take advantage of you. Do yourself a favor and ask a trusted friend what private information they can see on your sites. If you're not happy with the answer, remove it. Tip three, don't forget about smartphone safety. In an era of smartphones, cyber safety should extend to your phone too, especially when it comes to tech safety. Remember how your parents warned you about accepting car rides from strangers? All right, don't accept phone calls or texts from strangers either. Only answer texts and phone calls from your contact list. Tip four, handle hacking intelligently. Part of being a member of the World Wide Web is being aware that no matter how careful you are, your account may get hacked. Getting hacked sub. C, do a sweep of your computer with antivirus software. All right, odds are not only did you send something nasty out to your friends, 
You might have something nasty lurking in the recesses of your hard drive! D. Back up your files. If there's a virus your computer doesn't catch, you don't want to lose everything. Okay, backing up files is totally a chore, but you'll be really happy you did it. Go ahead and invest in a cheap, portable hard drive and keep it somewhere safe. To recap, remember these points. 1. Anything you put on the internet will be there for a very long time. Believe me, I've thought a lot about this. 2. Your personal information shouldn't be visible to everybody. 3. Do not accept phone calls or texts from strange numbers. And 4. If you're hacked, change your password, check that sent box, and clean off your hard drive ASAP. Ah, <sighs> uh, well, that's all from me today, Wellcasters. Would you do me a kindness? Subscribe to our channel. Sign up for our newsletter to receive sneak peeks and other awesome stuff. See you later! Hey, I'm Darius. And I'm Maya. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of addicted to my phone and my computer. We both are. But hey, they do great things. They're great at waking us up. They let us have important conversations with our friends. And they keep us informed about the world. So yeah, our phones and computers are amazing. But we don't always do amazing things with them. It's all too common that we hear about our friends being cyberbullied. Or maybe we've even experienced cyberbullying ourselves. Cyberbullying is any sort of communication through your phone or your computer that's meant to hurt or intimidate another person. If it happens to you, it's hard not to react. And if you're the one doing it, it's easy to forget that you might be hurting a real person. You never know what someone might be going through. With so much negativity on social media, more and more kids are experiencing anxiety and depression. And I would never want to be the person who makes that worse. You've probably heard the phrase, think before you speak, a million times. But this might be a new one. Think before you post. The next time you want to say something out of anger or make a joke about someone online, think about how it might feel if it happened to you. You might think they deserve it, or you're just joking around, but what you're about to do is bullying. If you see it happening to someone else, be courageous enough to speak up for them in a positive way. In order to stand up for yourself, Remember these tips. Block, report, and tell an adult. Block the person bullying you. Report the abuse if you can. And remember, keep the messages. You might need to show them to an adult. Tell an adult you trust. They want to help you. Remember, what we say to each other matters. Yeah, you never know what someone else might be going through. And if you're being bullied, it's not your fault. No one has the right to hurt you or make you feel unsafe, online or in person. Remember, block, report, and tell an adult. 
even though it doesn't always feel like it, there's so much more to life than our phones and social media. Hey, I'm Darius. And I'm Maya. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of addicted to my phone and my computer. We both are. But hey, they do great things. They're great at waking us up. They let us have important conversations with our friends. And they keep us informed about the world. So yeah, our phones and computers are amazing. But we don't always do amazing things with them. It's all too common that we hear about our friends being cyberbullied. Or maybe we've even... And I'm Darius. And we have to talk about something. It's bullying. When people think of bullying, they think of kids getting shoved into lockers or having their heads flushed in a toilet. But the truth is, bullying can be a lot more complicated than that. Bullies use their power to hurt or control others. And they might make you feel unsafe in places where you should feel protected. And that's not okay. Your school, sports teams, and after-school clubs have to be safe spaces for everyone. There was a time when I didn't feel welcome at school. Some girls that I thought were my friends had decided I wasn't cool enough for them. Everywhere I went, they either laughed at me, made fun of me, or ignored me altogether. I didn't know what to do. Yeah, there was a time when I didn't feel safe at school. I started to dread coming to football practice because one of my teammates would always take the drills too far. It didn't seem like anyone noticed. I mean, the coach was too busy focusing on the whole team to see me being bullied. No one ever has the right to hurt you or make you feel unsafe. The problem is, bullying is hard to stop. And that's because most people's first reaction to bullying is to ignore it. You may feel like it will go away, but the problem with ignoring it is that it won't stop, and it might even get worse. Maybe you're embarrassed, or you want to believe that it's not a big deal. Or maybe you're afraid that telling will make it worse, or that whoever you need to tell won't understand or be able to help. But trust us, because we've been there. If you're being bullied, there's only one way to deal with it. Stop, walk away, and tell an adult. Stop taking the abuse. Get yourself away from the situation. And go talk to an adult you trust. Tell them everything. Parents, teachers, counselors, and coaches' first priority is your safety. Believe me, there are adults that want to help you. Bullies might scare you out of telling, but if you tell an adult, the bullying is more likely to stop. The adults in our lives won't tolerate bullying, but we can't tolerate it either. We have to stand up for each other, and we all know, some kids get it the worst. Last year, a friend of ours started feeling unwelcome and unsafe at school. He was being bullied for weeks just for being different and having different interests than some of the other kids at school. We didn't want to see our friend get hurt or feel like he didn't belong. So we helped do something about it. Kids who are LGBTQ or who are of color 
or maybe have learning challenges or physical differences, might get bullied the most. We need to work together to decide how safe our school can be. Our differences are our strengths. We also know that bullies need help too. But we can't tolerate their behavior. Never ignore bullying. Never stay silent. You will help yourself and help your bully more by speaking up. Stop, walk away, and tell an adult. Even if the bullying happens online or on your phone, speak up whenever you see, hear about, or experience bullying. Do it for yourself, for your friends, for the kids you've never even met. Always speak up. It's time we work together to make our schools safer for everyone. बस मैं एफ बी ओपन करती हूँ अब ये क्या आया यू वॉन्ट सिक्सटी लैख रुपीज टू गेट सेंड योर नेम बैंक डिटेल्स एंड एड्रेस ओके ईमेल ओपन करके देखती हूँ ओ ये क्या हो रहा है इसी का सारा डेटा कॉपी हो रहा है ये कॉपी रुक क्यों नहीं रही है क्या हुआ बेटा मम्मी मैं लैपटॉप में एफ भी ओपन कर रही थी तो उसमें एक मेल आया जब मैंने वो मेल ओपन किया तो लैपटॉप का सारा डेटा कॉपी होने लग गया मैं तेरे पापा को बोलती हूँ अजी सुनते हो आ बोलो क्या हुआ हमारे साथ एक फ्रॉड हुआ है कैसे क्या हो गया अब हम क्या करें? चलो हम साइबर क्राइम के ऑफिस चलते हैं। क्यों? वहाँ क्या है लगता है हमारे साथ साइबर क्राइम हुआ है सर एक्चुअली मेरी बेटी लैपटॉप यूज कर रही थी तो एक अनोन ईमेल आया और अचानक से सारा डेटा कॉपी हो गया आपके साथ साइबर क्राइम हुआ है भारत सबसे ज्यादा इंटरनेट इस्तेमाल करने वाला विश्व का तीसरा देश है आप अपने कंप्यूटर मोबाइल आदि से कहीं ना कहीं इंटरनेट से जुड़े हैं इसीलिए साइबर क्राइम साइबर अपराध साइबर आतंकवाद जैसे शब्दों के बारे में आपका जानना जरूरी है साइबर क्राइम कई प्रकार के होते हैं वायरस फैलाना सॉफ्टवेयर पायरेसी फर्जी और सोशल नेटवर्किंग साइट पे अफवाह फैलाना निजी जानकारी चुराना ये सब साइबर क्राइम के प्रकार हैं निजी जानकारी चुराना इसे साधारण भाषा में हैकिंग कहते हैं 
इसमें अपराधी आपके कंप्यूटर नेटवर्क में प्रवेश कर आपकी निजी जानकारी जैसे कि आपका नेट बैंकिंग पासवर्ड आपके क्रेडिट कार्ड की जानकारी आदि चोरी कर लेता है इसी का दूसरा रूप है फिशिंग साइबर क्राइम के तहत कई कानून एवं धाराएं भी हैं, जैसे आईटी कानून 2000 की धारा सतर बी और 2008 की धारा छियासठ डी तैतालीस बी छियासठ ई सड़सठ सी आईपीसी की धारा चार सौ सत्तर चार सौ उन्नीस एवं 420 है उसके तहत अपराधी को तीन साल की कैद और दो लाख रुपए तक का जुर्माना होता है इसीलिए कहता हूँ सावधान रहे सतर्क रहे